chamfers, of course, to make the, the parts look nice, and also chamfer here. When I was a kid, I had a fairly small room for myself. Real talk. And that is why my father built a loft bed for me, essentially a platform spanning from one side of the room to the other in the middle of it, spanning three quarters of the room and then raised it up into the air, which gave me almost double the amount of space that I had available for myself. I really loved it. The loft bed was great. It was my playground, my sleeping area, playground for uh, having, having friends over and whatnot. And what made it even greater was two pulleys that he mounted on either side. So it was in the middle of the room and you could look down onto the, the main floor from both sides. And he mounted two pulleys on either side, which we had the greatest fun with. We were pulling things up and down and back and forth. And you could even have a long uh, line connected to both pulleys spanning up and down from either side of the loft bed. It was great, it was fantastic, I loved it. A couple of years ago, now I built a loft bed for my kids as well for their sleeping area, but also as a playground, like I had experienced that myself. And as I loved the love bed that my father built, I asked him for the, for the plans and built it very similarly to what he did back in the day. Down to angles of, or the steepness of the stairs, for example, because I knew it that, were, that was working fairly great, uh, and spacing of the, the fence bars, etc., etc. I told my kids that I had a pulley system back in the day for my own loft bed and they were really keen of the idea and always wanted to have it and I promised them I will build it for you. And this is what I did just now. It took me a while but now it's there and I wanted to talk about a specific design methodology that I used to build it called the pull and push or push and pull method. So what I wanted to have is kind of a contraption that offsets the the pulley outside of the um, projected you know, floor of the, the loft bed so that larger objects can just go up and be, uh, and, and be clear of the, um, the wood, of the underside of the wood, of uh, the underside of the wood, the underside of the loft bed essentially. So going, going up and the, the rope should be offset from the loft bed itself so that things can go up and down without hitting the underside of, of the loft bed itself. So I found in my basement uh, a piece of wood, uh, like a, a wooden bar. It was almost a meter long and I wanted to use that for the project, which means that I was limited by the size and the offset that I could offset the, the contraption by the size. And now let's jump over to Fusion and have a look how I did it. Okay, here we are in Fusion. So, First, an overview picture. This is what I wanted to, to build. Yeah. Uh, forget the naming. The naming is not good because I, I didn't properly do it. Now you have an idea how what I wanted to build. Let's rewind time a bit and go through the thinking process how I was designing that. And it all started with the single sketch. And I would say this is the most important sketch for the entire project because it outlines basically everything and is then derived from this one sketch. I started with laying out the basic shapes of the wooden pieces, the wooden beams, which is here, this piece, and it has a length of um, 180 millimeters, and here the second one with 210 millimeters. They are both angled at 30 degrees, that was kind of a compromise. 45 would be perfect, right? Because uh, if the pulley, so imagine this is the, um, the beam that is going then connecting the two sides. So this is one side and the other, other side uh, is then uh, offset to this. And this beam connects the two sides and the pulley is going to be mounted kind of here. And the forces will be perpen like parallel to this beam for a, a rope that is coming from this side and it's going down. So the forces go um, in the middle, like the, this 90 degree angle is then cut in half and the force vector will be 45 degrees in this direction. Now you can see this is offset or this is uh, angled at 30 degrees, which is kind of a compromise to take enough load and be stable enough, but at the same time not giving away too much 
length here because as I told you, I was kind of limited in, in length of the wooden piece that I had available. So 30 degrees is, is a compromise there, but it is also, I mean, the kids will not be, or actually I forbid, or yeah, I forbid the kids to lift heavy loads because that is dangerous. You know, people cannot be lifted uh, because the wood is not strong enough. The three pitted parts are actually, I guess. Um, and if something heavy is lifted and then somebody let go or lets go of the rope and it crashes down, dangerous. So I forbid this. So it doesn't have to be like rock solid. It is just necessary to be a bit solid and that's fine. Yeah. So I laid out those, those pieces. I offset them by a bit. So in this case, five millimeters, five millimeters here, because I knew that it cannot be, you know, touching the, so here is, here's the fence, right? On this side, it cannot touch the fence completely. There's a little bit of space. It needs to in between, uh, needs to be in between the fence and the wooden beam. And then I put this beam that is going to the other side in front of those two pieces, distributing the load uh, against the fence or through the, through the beams, again, beams against the fence in a nice way. And then the next step, very simple one, is just outlining a box essentially around those, those um, beam endpoints. As you can see, I didn't bother to create a complex geometry here outside of the, the wooden beam. I was just using the beam, beam lines, extended and further, and then added kind of construction lines to give it a bit more flesh where then the screws would go through. The same here. So it is touching really here. You can see the wooden beam. And here it's even more visible. I was just connecting, extending here a line. It is touching here, it is touching here, the wooden beams, those are the wooden beams, this and this. It is touching it at all sides. And you would say, okay, but wait a second, this is not gonna work, right? So let's now move forward in time. So first I extruded, oh, that was too fast, too fast, too fast. I extruded the, those, those pieces. Those wooden, that, that is then the, those will be the wooden pieces in the end. And I extended them or extruded them to have work tools. So they will be used as tools in the end to cut out material from the 3D printed parts. Next step, creating or extruding the 3D printed parts. So this is the first one. That's the second one. You can see that here is uh, Z-fighting happening, or it's, uh, I shouldn't call it Z-fighting, I guess, but you can see that those are flush. So they are really on the same, uh, at the same depth. How else could it be? And then the last one down here. And now comes already the important design step for this methodology, which is offsetting it by a bit. So I selected, you can see that here, I selected all the relevant faces. So that is all the faces that are going around, not this face, 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 <laughs> not the top face here, not the ones um, where the, the wooden beams are going through because I could also done this, but I didn't need to, but instead, and also not the back, back side of that, of course, obviously. But all the other faces I was selecting are here. You can see it easily. Okay. And by this, Fusion is taking the responsibility of, geo of, of creating additional geometry that I need for the pieces to make sense. But I don't have to design that in from a sketch point of view, but let the program extend it in, in or yeah, push and pull it in all uh, different directions. Very easy, very simple step. And it creates a lot of extra geometry that I need, but don't need to design myself in a complicated way. And from there, I was just adding the, the side beam and, and adding the plane to copy it, although it's kind of hidden right now. There it is. And then used the existing geometry to mirror 
over the different things that I needed. And then started to add the different screws that I needed for this part and this part. And as a final step, also added chamfers, of course, to make the, the parts look nice. And also a chamfer here for the screw to sink it in so that it's not sticking out in an ugly way. And those tiny holes. Because as you can, can imagine, you cannot simply, I mean, you could squeeze in to make the, um, the holes where uh, the parts go in very tight or essentially just cut it out as is and then squeeze in the wood and then hope that this is not working in such a way that at some point it's loose enough so that the entire contraption can fall apart. But I didn't want to go for any risks here and came up with this idea to put nails in guide holes, you can see it here, it goes through this piece, um, and then nail small nails through the wood without even the need to drill a hole because this wood is really a soft one. I have actually no idea what it is, but it is a very light, very soft material. And uh, in, in that sense, it is very easy to pull, uh, to push a nail through it. And by that, as it's also uh, exiting the other side, locking those wooden beams securely in place that the entire contraption then has internal stability. Enough of the talk, let's move over to the loft bed and I show you what I was building there, shall we? Cool. This shouldn't be, or this is not supposed to be a video um, to boast about the this love bed, but I have to say it worked out really well, and I'm almost surprised how how well it turned out to be. Anyway, so this is the upper side of the entire thing. You can pull up things here uh, and then clamp it down like a sailor and lock it in place, and you're good. Here's a small window that we incorporated into, into the side of the fence so that when things come up, you can actually pull them through. I have to see if this window is actually small, uh, too small or it's, if it's large enough or if we need to enlarge it actually. But in the end, you can also reach over the fence and, and grab something that is too big to go through here. And although the wood is fairly soft, it is sturdy enough to, yeah, hopefully withstand um, the difficulties it is going through in its lifetime with all the different play scenarios that are, you know, executed on it or against it. All right, so this project was a, a lot of fun and actually a real success story. It took me like, let me lie, 20 minutes to design this entire thing, build it overnight. Uh, the printing took like, I don't know, 10, 10 hours or so, because the, the parts were a, a little bit bigger and I printed it in a nice quality. And then next day I was able to go down to the basement and cut the pieces quickly with the, with the, uh, with the handsaw assemble it in the evening and then mounting it the next day was really quick and really swift and really nice actually. Okay, so how about you? You also have a loft bed, maybe you have kids, maybe you are now think about building something like this and adding a pulley to the loft bed. You absolutely should because for kids it's just the greatest thing in the world. You know, let me talk from experience to pull things up and down and have like a blasting time playing with that with their friends. 
Yeah, and with this, I leave you to it. If you want to bring a smile to my face and you liked what I did here, then I would appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing for new projects in the future. Yeah, with that, I'm your Bushi. I have a good one. Over and out. Over and out. Yeah, over and out. from one wall to the other, in the middle of the room and raising. And now my camera says zero minutes left to record and it's still recording, which is kind of confusing. So I guess 